Welcome back to another edition of the Clemson Sports Show, everyone. This is an emergency podcast edition. As Brent Venables, longtime Clemson defensive coordinator, was officially announced as the next head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. Matthew Connolly, my co-host, joining me once again. It, it, it's, a, it's a tough day. It's a difficult day for Clemson fans, but all, also a, a great day for another fan base. You know, what was your overall reaction to Venables of finally officially being hired by the Sooners? Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, first of all, just excited for him. You know, I think this is a great opportunity for him and his family. Uh, just as we're doing this podcast, he's just landed in Norman. And you know, I was watching the live video of that, the reaction, just, you know, he was so excited. His family seemed excited, hugging people he hasn't seen in a while, um, you know, high-fiving the crowd, signing autographs, the band's playing. He knows all the chants. Like, this seems like a, a good fit for him. You can tell how excited he is. He just couldn't stop smiling the entire time. Got a little emotional at one point just talking about, you know, having this opportunity after previously working at Oklahoma. So just starting off excited for for uh, Brent Venables, great opportunity for him. For the Clemson side, now it's a huge hire for Dabo Sweeney. I mean, you can't say enough about how important Brent Venables was to the success. Um, you know, the last game that, that Clemson played before he came on board, they gave up 70 points to Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, and he just completely turned things around. Defensively, uh, won two national titles, six straight playoffs, six straight ACC titles. You know, you knew year in and year out he was going to have one of the best defenses in the country. Um, and so great defense of mine. I know people may talk about, oh, he struggled some in some big games a couple of times. And, you know, obviously that did happen a couple of times, but he had a whole, whole, whole lot more uh, awesome moments in big games, awesome moments overall in his career than he did disappointing. I mean, you think about that Alabama offense in 2018, maybe maybe one of the most talented offenses in college football history, tons of guys playing in the NFL now, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell, uh, Tua, all, the, all these guys, and completely shut it down, scored 16 points, Clemson 144 to 16. So, man, just a great job uh, that he did while he was at Clemson and really excited for him to get this opportunity at Oklahoma. Yeah, I think my first reaction to this is that We've seen with the coaching carousel, coaches handle it um, a multitude of ways. We saw one coach spend 11 minutes with their team uh, before departing. Uh, We saw another coach say that he's not going to coach one school before officially being announced as as the head coach of another school the day after. Uh, A little bit of some trickery going on here. But Brent Venables did it exactly the way that you would want a coach to do it. He gave Clemson everything that he had. He gave them 10 great seasons. Uh, That 2018 season, which they they held Alabama uh, to 16 points at national championship. They had been giving up 13 points per game. Um, They set a a team record with 54 total sacks, the most by any FBS team since 2000. Venables did exactly uh, what Clemson fans could have hoped that he could have done, you know, during his tenure there, assisted in winning two national championships. So, That was my first overall reaction to it. The second reaction is, like you said, this is going to be a huge hire for Dabo Sweeney and company Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, uh, from a player standpoint, players that are currently on the roster. It's definitely going to be something worth monitoring. You know, I'll bring up Trent Simpson, talented linebacker for Clemson, uh, had changed his profile picture uh, from him in a Clemson uniform to an all black picture. I'm not going to say this means anything or that, you know, he's he's portal bound. We're not in that business of speculation, but you know, it is worth paying attention to, especially with Venables being his position coach, someone who's recruited him. We've seen some uh, recruits tweet out messages, you know, uh, mainly emojis, I, I should say. Um, Sherrod Koval saying no more interviews, you know, with the crying emoji. So, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to monitor this, of course, with early signing period 10 days away. Uh, we'll, we'll also be keeping tabs on the transfer portal, as as Matt has been doing recently. A lot of players have been dipping into the transfer portal. But, uh, yeah, th- those those are my two reactions there. First of all, uh, great by uh, Brent for how he did it, you know, looking forward to this next opportunity for him. And then secondly, you have to wonder about the ripple effect it's going to cause at Clemson. Yeah, like you mentioned, just recruits, definitely monitoring, monitoring that and then the transfer portal too. Um, you know, that's – man, you had Andrew McCuba tweeting at an Oklahoma player no. tonight, which obviously isn't great if you're at Clemson. Um, but, look, I mean, like you said, we don't want to speculate about what any of this means. We're just pointing out that it's a crazy time right now. I mean, you saw Lincoln Riley leave for Southern Cal and, and suddenly a lot of Oklahoma commits are jumping and, and going with him and players are transferring and stuff. That doesn't mean that's how it's going to happen at Clemson. You know, I think Dabo has a great culture at Clemson. 
there are other in defensive coaches um, that that you know the players are coached are close to offensive coaches the players are close close to Dabo obviously uh, has a great relationship with with these guys so I don't think it's time to completely panic or anything like that but definitely something um, worth monitoring and also kind of interested to see if any Clemson assistants leave and go with Brent Venables I mean I think that could play a role too and kind of who sticks around. Um, commits wise, maybe if guys transfer, look around, that kind of stuff. So definitely something else to monitor there as well. Yeah. William Christopher, Dabo Sweeney. Those are the only four words you need to know in regards to the Clemson Tigers. That guy, as long as he's there, you just have ultimate trust that he's going to be able to keep this program going uh, and, and keep it in the direction that they've been heading, which is right now it's, it's in a re- rebuilding stage. Of course, you know, even for, for Clemson, that's how great Clemson's been. It's nine and three is a rebuilding phase for them, but they're kind of in a little bit of a soft rebuild now. We're going to be keeping tabs on the Tony Elliott situation. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in this podcast. But, you you know, you could potentially be losing your top two assistants uh, and we'll see how they respond with that. Do they decide to do a, a in-house hire and, and maybe promote someone like Mike Reed, who, who really has been waiting a while and would definitely be uh, well deserving of this opportunity? Do they decide to go outside and look for someone else? Uh, I'm really interested in that. Uh, in, in your opinion, Matt, just based on, you know, you covering Clemson for so long, knowing the program inside and out. Do you think that's more likely than not that they go with an in-house hire or they they decide to to go outside for that defensive coordinator position? Yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, it really is. You know, I, I think that there are a few candidates in-house. Um, you know, you mentioned Mike Reed being one. I think Todd Bates possibly mm-hmm. another guy who might get a look. Um, maybe even Mickey Kahn gets a look. I mean, there, there are guys on the staff that are experienced coaches, have done really well, are good recruiters, uh, haven't necessarily run a defense before at least not at this college level, uh, but but that are maybe worth a look. But then you also have to think, too, you know, Clemson is one of the most attractive programs in the country. Great job of recruiting, great at developing talent. Uh, obviously, working under Davos Sweeney, you know, it's a, they talk all the time about the family atmosphere, the way, you know, he, he cares a lot about making sure you're blending your family time, your work time, uh, that work-life balance is always good. So, if Clemson decides to go, you know, out of house and, and bring in a candidate, I think it could get a really good one. Um, and we'll, we'll have more on that on, on ClemsonSports.com throughout this week. But yeah, we'll just kind of have to have to see how it all plays out. Uh, but definitely, I think you know some options in house as well as uh, looking outside too. When do you think Clemson will get back to the Clemson Tigers? You know, the Tigers who made the college football playoff. Uh, I believe it was five consecutive seasons. Um, the, the Clemson Tigers, who have won that two national championships. When do you think we'll six, see that program? Six straight. Six straight. Okay, so six yeah. straight football playoff appearances. I, I, I lost track. You, when do you think they'll get back to that form? <sighs> That's tough to say. Um, I think, man, a lot of that depends probably on DJ taking another step mm-hmm. forward this year. Um, I mean, look, like right now, this is not a sure thing by any stretch with Brent Venables leaving, with possibly Tony Elliott. Uh, leaving, which you you mentioned, we'll talk about a little later. I don't think it's uh, you know a lock that uh, they're going to be back next year, or the year after that, or anything. I think it's kind of hard. I mean, there's still a lot of good talent on this roster. Obviously, Kate Klubnik coming in at quarterback. It's a you know arguably the best quarterback in the country. Yeah. So Clemson's not going to suddenly just take some huge uh, dive and, and just fall off of relevancy, national relevancy, uh, with Brent Venables leaving, but. It's definitely with him gone. It's definitely going to get harder to kind of get back to that playoff and national title contending, um, I guess, place. I will say, you know, Dabo Sweeney loves the challenge, and you know, when things aren't going well, he he's always been able to fix it. Uh, and, you know, you don't make six straight playoffs and win two national titles if you're not motivated and, and know what it takes to win and know what it takes to win big. So he's not gonna, just going to sit around and. So, well, that's it. The run's over. We're done. We're, we're not going to get back. I promise you that. Uh, you know, I, I think he'll go make a very good hire. And, you know, Clemson, Clemson isn't going to be down for long. Um, you know, if, if nine and three is down and losing your top coordinator is down, I don't think Clemson is going to be down for long. I mean, this day was bound to happen, right? I mean, Brent Venables is, is so talented. He's so good at what he does. You know, he's he's really good on the recruiting trail. And we saw that this week, too, um, you know, with the people that I've spoken with, whether it was the players or coaches or, 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 or um, you know, longtime trainers, as, as in the case of Toriana Pride. They really spoke highly of who Venables is and and the type of pitch that he made to them. So 
you know, he, he's a really good recruiter. It's going to be tough to replace him as a recruiter. But at the end of the day, this was something that was going to happen. When you have an elite talent like that on the staff, it was just bound for an opportunity like this to pop up. Uh, another thing I'm really interested in talking to you about, Dabo Sweeney did speak um, on Sunday, talked about he didn't really necessarily address the Venable situation, of course, um, but did, did laugh at the speculation that, he was a candidate for the Oklahoma job. Can you kind of go through, uh, Matt, what you heard from Dabo? Anything interesting that caught your attention? Yeah, like you mentioned, um, I mean, look, there were several Oklahoma sites saying that Dabo was a candidate for for that job, which, you know, <laughs> we kind of laughed. I mean, look, we kind of laughed at it. We kind of talked about it um, on here and, and kind of how silly it was. Um, but, yeah, look, it was out there. So, I, you know, I did ask him, which I felt like, was a fair question, and, and I think he probably knew it was coming, and he just kind of chuckled, uh, <laughs> which is about what I expected him to do. It was like, yeah, look, I talked to Oklahoma. Um, I talked to them, but not – you know, he, he talked to them on behalf of Brent Venables, telling them about Brent Venables um, and why that would make sense. So, he didn't talk to them um, from a from a he's going there perspective. And, yeah, like you said, I mean, he – you know, I think he's excited for for the, uh, the Cheez-It Bowl – being down in Orlando, you know, he said that this isn't like some bad bowl. He doesn't want fans thinking this is some, you know, just and, – and he's been very clear for years now that he doesn't want the bowls to be dis- diminished and the importance of the bowls to be dis- diminished. That's why he didn't like the college football playoff. Um, he just feels like the more teams that are in the playoff, the less the bowls matter. Mm-hmm. So he's – he's I think he's very excited in the, about this bowl. I think you'll see Clemson go out and play well in this bowl. Um, I think he'll have the guys motivated. That's something that he obviously excels at. But, yeah, he was actually in Las Vegas uh, getting ready for the College uh, Football Hall of Fame, T.J. Spiller getting um, inducted. So, you know, I think he's excited for this matchup with Iowa State. He hasn't seen a ton of them. Obviously has a lot of respect for Matt Campbell and the job he's done there. Um, But, yeah, yeah, it should be a fun fun matchup. You know, I think it's two teams that maybe didn't reach expectations. Uh, You know, Iowa State being 7-5 and this year. I know there were some guy, some people that thought they had a maybe outside chance at the Big 12 title this year. Um, and then Clemson obviously going nine and three was a little bit of a disappointment. So mm-hmm. it'll be an interesting, uh, interesting bowl game, I think, for sure. Yeah, let's get into the bowl game real quickly. Obviously, not going to spend too much time on it. We'll we'll save that for future editions of this podcast and, uh, you know, that that aren't related to Brent Venables and Tony Elliott. But, you know, go, going into it, Darian Wrencher, who, uh, you know, obviously – a, a longtime Clemson Tiger did have some jokes about the about the bowl. And look, I, I don't think it's necessarily that it's a bad bowl, but when you have ch- cheese it in front of it, you know, it just it kind it kind of makes it a joke of itself in and of itself. You know, like some players were saying, let's get cheesy today, or you know, who's ready to get their cheese on? It's just it, it kind of brings on the joke on it in, in and of itself. But look, they're playing a, a good Iowa State team. It's an opportunity to get 10 wins for the 11th straight year. Uh, so yeah, Matt, do you think this would, how, how much of an impact would this one have on Clemson's program, even though it is the, the cheese at bowl and not playing in the college football playoffs? Yeah. First of all, I haven't had cheese. It's in a while, but they had, yeah, them in the, they had them in the press box at the South Carolina game and they were delicious. So I'm a big cheese it guy now. Um, uh, looking forward to having some, I assume they'll have some in Orlando. I can't imagine that, that they won't be plentiful down there. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, okay, I think, at, the, at the Duke Mayo, um, at the Duke Mayo classic Clemson, Georgia, they gave out that big, that big jar of Mayo. They have to give us an assorted variety of cheese. It's cause I haven't had it in a while, you know, tr- um, tr- trying to keep the pounds off, you know, cheese. It is not good. <laughs> I, I can definitely go through a whole bag in one night, but I, I love the the reduced fat is actually my favorite one there. Um, and they also had the family size one. It's pretty crazy. So hopefully they get, they treat us when we're down there. Hey, I'm, I'm much more excited for uh cheeses than I was for mayonnaise. I'm not a big <laughs> Mayo guy. So sign me up for the cheeses. Uh, but no, I, mean, I think for Clemson, you know, the big thing is just an opportunity to win 10 games would be a huge accomplishment for this team to, to win 10 games for an 11th straight year. Just uh, man, just, you know, you, you that, I think that's been, not as impressive as a playoff streak, but it's pretty near the fact that, you know, you just keep the streak going and every single year for more than a decade, you're reaching 10 wins. Um, so, you know, to have a, a down year, to have the offensive struggles this team did, um, overcoming all the injuries and everything to still win 10 games, yeah. I think would be huge. Um, so that's kind of how I look at the bowl game. You know, I don't know if you'll have any guys opt out or any seniors kind of, 
uh, just go ahead and move on, even, I guess, possible transfers or anything like that. I mean, we don't know exactly what this Clemson team is going to look like for the bowl game. Um, but whoever's out there, I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity for uh, Clemson to get to 10 wins. So one of the reasons why Clemson has been able to win 10 games in the past 10 seasons, potentially in 11 straight years, is because of Tony Elliott. Uh, Matt, what's the latest going on with Clemson's offensive coordinator, potential opportunities for him elsewhere? Yeah, so we confirmed uh, tonight that – I'm sorry, I guess this afternoon that he interviewed uh, with Duke on Sunday. So potentially uh, he could be on the move as well. You know, I think some people look at that job as not a great job, but I kind of look at it as, look, it's an ACC job. Um, you know, I think it's a place where they'll be patient, allow him to try to build that program. They're not expecting him to come in and win 10 games right away or anything like that. Um, I think it's a pretty good fit for him. And, you know, I think I think he could recruit pretty well there as just about as well as anyone can at Duke. I mean, I just think it's an opportunity, a pretty good opportunity for him. Uh, kind of the same thing with Virginia. He's still in the mix uh, at Virginia. So, you know, we'll see. How, I, you know, some people are saying he's maybe in the final two. Um, at Virginia. So, mm. you know, that's, that's going on. Um, obviously, we're tracking that situation. And then Dan Radakovich in, in Miami uh, still still wouldn't be surprised at all if he ends up at Miami and if that takes place Monday. Um, I don't think it's 100% locked, but, but things continue to kind of seem like they're heading that way. So, crazy, crazy time. And it's weird. I mean, we've had so many consecutive years where um, – and I know you haven't been around for, but we've had a lot of consecutive years where – it's been relatively quiet off seasons. I mean, we had Jeff Scott going to USF a few years back, but other than that, you know, the coordinators have stayed the same. Obviously the head coach has stayed the same. The AD has been here. Uh, it's not a lot of you know, the basketball coach has been in place for a long time now. Same with, same thing with baseball. So not a ton of coaching searches and, and any of this kind of stuff happening and it's all kind of happening at once. So yeah, in some ways it's, it's exciting. In some ways it's uh like, I'm sitting here drinking coffee right now at midnight. So <laughs> <laughs> just just kind of how it is right now um but like i said it, it's it's fun it's exciting kind of tracking everything and look it'll be a new new look coaching staff next year but uh definitely a challenge and Davos when he loves challenges so we'll kind of see how it all plays out and that kind of leads me to my next point i'd like to issue a formal apology to clemson tiger fans uh for what I brought on to you all. I feel like this is partially my fault, Matt. You know, I arrive and Clemson goes nine and three, you know, probably the worst season in over a decade and, you know, lose Venables and and Elliot may be leaving. So I feel, I feel like, you know, I'm part of the reason why uh, I, I've spoken with some other beat writers saying uh, to, to never like step foot near their school or, or anything if I bring a <laughs> curse onto them. So uh, I, I would like to apologize for that. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Look, I was, I was covering, uh, South Carolina early on uh, last decade and they won a couple of baseball national titles. And then I went to the final four with the women's uh, South Carolina team. They won a national title covered, covered that and then won a couple national titles with Clemson football. So I should be able to cancel you out here. It may take a little bit, but I should be able to overcome maybe next year. We can, uh, we can uh, get Clemson back on track and I'll, I'll cancel you out with my good luck. I'm hoping so because I've had Florida my first few years and obviously, you know, that didn't necessarily pan out in championships, of course. And then, you know, Ohio State got got close, you know, last year with the with the game against Alabama. But uh, th that's all I'm all joking. Of course, look, Cle it, some people feel like Clemson's on a, a downfall. I, I, you know, a couple of friends exchanged messages with me saying Dynasty's over. I had a South Carolina fan when I was at the game afterwards shout that at some at some players after losing 30 to zero, but uh, you know, if dynasty is not over. If, if this is dynasty over, then uh, we're going to have to read the redefine what that phrase means. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep on looking at the Tony Elliott situation, the Dan Radakovich situation in Miami. And speaking of which Miami is in a, in, in a, I don't even know how you can explain that situation, Matt, you've got uh, Manny Diaz kind of hit his, his head coaching, uh, tenure at Miami relies on what Mario Cristobal decides to do and no decision has been made yet. That, that That's just been insane what's been going on over there. Just another chapter, another layer to this crazy coaching carousel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of playing into it too. I mean, it has to be, you know, if, if you're Dan Radikovic, Radikovic, you have to be thinking, God, there's a lot happening right now and, yeah. and maybe want to wait and see how it plays out with the coaching staff and, and the football staff before, uh, he jumps on board. So 
definitely something to monitor. Just a lot of moving parts right now, uh, really all over the Clemson Athletics Department. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you, you, since you brought up moving parts, let's talk about the transfer portal. Clemson's lost eight players to the transfer portal already this season. Uh, Frank Ladson being one of them, Ty, Tyson Pumachon being another, uh, Paul Teo, Kane Patterson, Ray Doran, Joseph Charleston, uh, Michael Dukes, Lynn J. Dixon. It's just been a lot. And they have 14 commits right now in the 2022 class. And I have to emphasize right now, we don't know what that's going to be like two, three days from now, especially with Venable's departure. Matt, we bring we brought this up a lot, but I feel like this is really the time with all the evidence supporting it to say that Clemson absolutely needs to go into the transfer portal this offseason. I, I feel very strongly about that. Yeah, I do too. You can't you can't just keep losing players uh, to the portal and not replacing them with guys. So look, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, we kind of advocated for it during the season. Yeah. Um, just saying that that's something they needed to do this offseason. The more transfers they have, the more strongly I feel about that take. So, yeah, I think for sure. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they go in for a quarterback, possibly a running back, if they end up missing on Trevor Etienne. Uh, you know, we'll see who else ends up transferring. They may end up needing some guys on the defensive side of the ball as well, depending on what happens there, if any commits uh, flip or anything. So, yeah, I think I think it just makes too much sense to not uh, explore the transfer portal this offseason. I'm really interested in seeing how Dabo Sweeney decides to change up his philosophy with things because he's been adamant against the transfer portal. It's something that he doesn't want to necessarily participate in. He 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 is more of that old school mentality. You sign for school, we're committed to you, you're committed to us kind of deal. Uh, but I'm interested in hearing from you. Are there any other philosophies you believe Dabo needs to change going forward, considering the loss of, of Venables, considering the potential loss of Tony Elliott and just all the departures they've seen at the transfer portal so far? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you know, I know people uh, feel like they should maybe offer more guys. And, you know, I think that that's definitely an argument you can make. Um, this, this, you know, so you're better position and not maybe offering guys late. I will say with the transfer portal, I mean, I think people assume that he's like really, really against the portal. I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Like he's said several times, everyone's going to have to use the portal at some point. Clemson's going to have to use the portal. He doesn't mind using it, um, but it's definitely not his like first choice. I mean, I think that he would prefer to not have to use it if he doesn't have to. Like if, if that in a perfect world, he wouldn't have to. Uh, but he also knows that this isn't a perfect world and that players are going to transfer and that this is going to be a bigger and bigger part of college football. So. I think he's uh I think he's prepared to um you know I, I don't think he's like staunchly against it or anything just definitely not his first choice though. Great stuff today, Matt. Really great stuff. Um, you know, Venables leaving the situation with Tony Elliott, uh, Dan uh, Radikovich. You know, you mentioned him, uh, and we're going to continue to monitor these situations. Follow us on ClemsonSports.com. Before we sign off, Matt, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Whether it's about Venables, Elliott, um, you know, Clemson in general. No, I don't think so. I'd, I'll just say, you know, just reiterate, just happy for Brent Venables. Um, yeah. you know, I think it's just a long time coming. I mean, he gave – I know some fans are kind of sad and frustrated right now, but I would encourage you just to think about what he gave to this program. You know, all the all the long hours watching film, studying. Um, you know, I mean, I think he was prepared as any coach in college football uh, mm -hmm. during his decade-plus at Clemson. Just, you know, film-wise, knowing what other teams were going to do, um, you know, kind of demanding excellence from his players, defensive uh, system, just everything, being able to adapt on the fly. So I think I would just encourage Clemson fans to be thankful for the run you had and not, not uh, you know, have any will, Ill, Ill will or anything like that. Just be, be happy for Venables and, and maybe have, a, have another rooting interest uh, in the Midwest, maybe jump on the Oklahoma bandwagon some. Uh, but, yeah, just super happy for Brent and uh, – Kind of excited to see how things unfold here over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and a lot of the players were happy for him. I'm just going to read off quickly since we're at the end of the podcast, just some of the reactions that we gathered uh, from social media. Uh, players, commits, talking about it. KJ Henry saying, y'all better pa party about that this one. He's that dude. Say much love, Coach V. Uh, DJ Uyunglele said no one better. Hashtag legend. Xavier Thomas, obviously longtime defensive um, lineman for Clemson saying, so happy for Coach. He deserves it more than anyone. Hardest working man I've ever known. Y'all take care of him. 
uh, Trent Simpson saying well-deserved target is working coach out there. So as you can see, you know, there's been a lot, there's a lot of those and you can go on ClemsonSports.com and read those reactions, but uh, there's just a lot of love and a lot of appreciation for coach V no ill will whatsoever. I haven't seen one negative comment about uh, coach Venables. Actually, if, if there is a villain in any of this uh, for Clemson fans, it's Lincoln Riley. <laughs> that's the one, that's the one yeah. thing that, yeah, That's Cle- what we're Clemson people are thinking, uh, man, if Lincoln Riley was still there, then Venables wouldn't be. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's the villain for uh, Clemson fans for sure right now. And and there you go, because in, in this situation, when you're sad, you obviously want to feel a little bit angry at someone. You can't take that anger out on Coach V, though, or, or, or Clemson. You know, they, they did things the right way and take your anger out on Lincoln Riley, who th- <laughs> did this uh, right here, the, the peace sign, uh, the fight on sign to Oklahoma and took off. Uh, to USC. So we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap up today's podcast, probably having another one coming out on Tuesday or Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for subscribing to it. We really appreciate the response to our last video on Venable. So uh, keep it locked in with ClemsonSports.com. Until next time, we'll catch you all later.